uh, the textbooks which are out there, they have been written 15 years, 20 years ago. They are not talking about what's happening now. What's the cutting edge research? That's what I try to use to bring into the classroom and talk about, hey, this is what is happening. One of the key interventions uh, which could be done is looking at can we address this people's need to belong in some other ways. People share these fake news because we as human beings, we tend to live in groups. Fake news is, is one way in which people sell their propaganda, they want to influence others and we look at who are those people who want to influence others and why are they doing it. You know, the question of why for me was more interesting because just like many of us, we are part of these WhatsApp groups and social media where we receive all kinds of forwards from our friends and family and I was asking myself, I know these are my friends, I know they are my family members, I know they are good people. Why are they sending this, this kind of news, you know, which I know is not true? And we ran this study, we, we actually ran this study over a period of six months on Twitter, looking at real people sharing fake news and looking at why they are doing it. Uh, and this period encompassed, you know, the 2020 US presidential election, as well as uh, the COVID, the, all the fake news which were happening around the time of COVID. And we found, you know, there's one re there are many reasons but one critical reason that we found was people share this fake news because we as human beings we tend to live in groups and when we tend to live in groups we don't want to be ostracized from those groups or excluded from those groups so if some member of our group is sharing fake news and i know i want to keep interacting with that person in the future i still want them to uh, to be my friends and so forth I end up doing the same without actually believing in that news, you know, so it's just a way, you know, uh, when we work in groups, uh, there's a greater need that I want to belong to a group which is driving this phenomena, you know, so, so th those are the ways in which uh, I do my work. One of the key interventions uh, which could be done is looking at can we address this people's need to belong in some other ways, you know, so in social psychology, uh, there is a concept called self-affirmation. So what that means is that when we are feeling threatened because one of our need is in jeopardy or is in question, so in this case, if it is the need for belongingness to be part of this group, if that is in question, I feel somehow threatened. And if I can be affirmed by a different value uh, in a different domain, which maybe not need to belong, but something else that I am a good person, that I value sincerity, I value integrity, you know, if those kind of uh, things can be affirmed, then it has reduces the effect of me behaving in sharing fake news in this other domain, you know. So that's, that's one way to think about it. The other is more structural. Uh, can we do something about our social media, you know, which results in sharing of these fake news? Do these fact checker helps? And, and we ran that study with fact checkers, look, telling people, you know, this is probably not uh, the right news. This may not be true. Its veracity is in question. Would you still want to share it? Uh, the good thing was majority of them reduce their sharing of fake news when they saw these fact checker apart from a certain minority. So in some ways, you know, it does offer hope, you know, that if we have some of these structural uh, ways of improving our social media, it can also curb down misinformation. We do research. Research is not just for academia or for our academic community. The idea for research is that what we can learn from it and how we can educate the masses as well as my students, you know. So in the class, you know, uh, the courses I teach, a lot of my courses actually I talk about real research papers, uh, some of course from my academic community and some of course mine, you know. The idea being uh, the textbooks which are out there, they have been written 15 years, 20 years ago. They are not talking about what's happening now, what's the cutting edge research. That's what I try to use to bring into the classroom and talk about, hey, this is what is happening. If you are on social media, this is how it is affecting your influence. This is how it is affecting your chances to be a leader. Based on your gender, this is how people are perceiving you on social media. You know, so those are the kind of things I bring in. Uh, I have also uh, written case studies, you know, which are actually based on some of the implications of my research or some of the principles of research that I work on. And, and I, have sh I have given those uh, ex as exercises to my students in class so that they can learn from it uh, and understand what the, what the current research can teach them uh, about some of these phenomena, which is very relevant to them in their day-to-day -day as well as in their organizational life.